Hello, and welcome to another episode of Code Time IO. My name is Pete Medina, and today we're going to look at using our command line tools that we've recently installed. So that's Node and that's Gulp, and we're going to use it to compile the SAS code that comes packaged with Bootstrap. So right now I'm at getbootstrap.com, and I'm going to scroll down right here to this button that says download, and I'm going to click that. And it's going to give me a couple options. The first one is the compiled CSS and JS. That's not the version I want. So let's move a little bit past that. And the one we want is download source. And that's going to include all of the SAS files and other things that come with Bootstrap. So let's go ahead and give that a download. All right, so here we go. It's downloaded at bootstrap 4.0.0 beta.zip. Right, so I'm going to open this up. And I'll just drag this over to my desktop here. And I'm going to rename it to Bootstrap, make it a little bit easier. Okay, now notice that I have this zip file right here. That's one of the code time IO download files for this project. Go ahead and download that on the link provided below. That's gonna have some files that are necessary to complete this exercise. So with this one downloaded, I'm going to go ahead and unzip that too. I'll move that right here and I'm going to trash this folder. Okay, so a couple things here. The first one is let's open up Bootstrap. And notice that it has a bunch of files in here. These are all of the source files needed to create your own custom versions of Bootstrap. So to compile the SAS and the JavaScript and to build out the documentation and so forth. Most of these we do not actually need. A lot of these files in here are meant to create versions of the documentation locally. So if we go back to the Bootstrap website and we click documentation right here, all of these files will create our own version of this. That's overkill for our purposes. For most production sites, you don't need this. So we're going to delete that. So I'm gonna go back in here and I'm just gonna do command alt to select everything. And then I'm going to command click the ones that I want to keep. So I'm going to command click SCSS. I'm going to command click JS. I'm going to command click dist, D-I-S-T. And I believe that's all I need to worry about gathering in this case. So let's just go through that again. SCSS, JS, and dist. The rest of these I don't need. These are mostly for building out the documentation. So let's go ahead and drag these into the trash. Okay, so with these in place, I'm going to open up each one. Notice that I go into SAS, I have all of these SCSS folders. Now I keep saying SAS. SAS and SCSS are interchangeable. They're pretty much the same language. They both require a, comp a compiler in order to convert into CSS. The main difference is that SAS has a slightly different syntax than SCSS. SCSS follows a very CSS sort of uh, mindset and syntax. So it's a little bit easier to jump from CSS to SCSS. But just know that whenever I say SAS, I'm referring to this SCSS code. All right, so here are all of the SCSS files. These compile into, into CSS in the final version. I'm gonna jump over here, I see JS. These are the JavaScript files that Bootstrap comes packaged with for building out all the different components. And then this, these are the final compiled versions. Now, whenever you create your website, this is where you're going to be putting your HTML files. If I go into the CSS folder, I'll have all of these different CSS files. The main one, the important one, or ones, I should use the plural version, is bootstrap.css and bootstrap.min.css. These two files are the core of Bootstrap. The main difference between regular bootstrap and bootstrap.min, notice the file size. This one is 125 kilobytes. This one is 157 kilobytes. The, the, the main thing is that this one, if I were to open this up in Sublime Text, see how it's just one really long string in here, goes on forever. That's because there's no spaces in here. It makes the file a lot smaller than if I were to open up this version here. But that's not really important for now, so let's go ahead and close this up. All right, so we have 
our cleaned up bootstrap folder. Now I'm going to go into the exercise files for this project right here. And I have two files here. I have gulp file.js, so JavaScript file. And I have a package.json file. I'm going to select both of these and drag them into the root of that bootstrap folder. Now let's open up both these. In fact, let's just open up the entire bootstrap folder in Sublime. So I'm just going to drag this into Sublime. Okay. Now these are a bunch of hidden files. I'm not gonna worry about them for now. The ones that I do wanna see are gulp file and package. And what I mean by hidden files, by the way, in case you're wondering, so see how these all start with a, a period in front of them. Now, if I open up this bootstrap folder, I won't see them here. They're only visible to the operating system and to a code editor. In fact, let's select all of these, which we don't need. And I'm going to right click it and just hit delete file. This way we make room. Okay, great. So let's look at package.json first. And what this file does is it's telling Node, which was the, the program we installed in the first episode of this series, which plugins we want to come, or that we want to add to our project. And so I'll move through this right now. That's under dev dependencies. We want this project to use gulp. We want it to use auto prefixer. And what auto prefixer does is it takes current versions of the CSS syntax, and it'll translate them into a format that all their browsers can understand. So we're gonna make sure that we have that. We're gonna have Gulp cache installed. All that does is it makes it a little bit faster to, you know, when we recompile the same files over and over. We have Gulp clean CSS, that's a minifier, so that creates that .min file. We have image min, and that's an image compressor. So whenever you're saving graphics to the web, you're probably familiar in Photoshop having to go through that whole save for web step. Well, Gulp Image Min removes that step. Then there's Gulp Notify that just pops up some notifications on terminal. It tells us, hey, you know, this task is done. There's Gulp Rename. That plugin will rename our files for it. So it'll compile and then it'll save it out and it'll change the name. So in this case, it'll save bootstrap and then bootstrap.min. And then finally, there's Gulp Ruby SAS, which if you'll remember from an earlier video we've installed, it's necessary for compiling our SAS. So that's what a package.json file does. Any kind of workflow that relies on NPM or Node is going to require a package.json file. And that just tells it what kind of plugins it needs to have installed. The next one here is gulpfile.js. This is actually what, what makes a magic happen. So I'll open this up and we'll, we'll go through it really fast. Here are the variables. So these are all the different plugins. We're just saying that uh, we have gulp, we want to require gulp, auto prefixer, gulp cache, etc. Then below that is a task. So whenever we run this uh, gulp file through terminal, it's going to start from the top and it's going to move down to the bottom. So our first task is our styles task, and that's going to convert the, the bootstrap.scss file into CSS. So we're telling it go here, return an expanded version. That just means a large, um, a non-minified version. We're gonna tell it to run it through auto prefixer and we wanna include support for the last three versions of all the major browsers. Then we're going to save it out to our dist slash CSS folder. And I'm gonna open that up really fast. So here I am, dist CSS. So we're telling it when you're done compiling the SAS code, Go ahead and save it in here, and we're gonna overwrite these two files. All right, then we're gonna create a minified version, and we're gonna compress that minified version with clean CSS, and we're gonna save that again in that disk slash CSS folder. And then we're gonna return the message styles task complete. Then it's gonna move down to images. Any images we have in our images folder, which we haven't created yet, but anything we have in there, it's gonna go through that, grab them, run through this uh, image compression, and then it's gonna save them in our disk folder and return another message. Okay, and then the last one right here, task watch. Whenever we enter the gulp watch command, and we'll cover that in a second, what that does is it tells it anytime you detect a change in either the SCSS folder, so anytime we save our files, or in the images folder, so anytime we add a new image, go ahead and run through these tasks. 
Okay, so that's what Gulf file and that's what package.json do. So I'm going to close this up and I'm gonna go back into Bootstrap. And I want to create an images folder. So I'm going to just write images. And then inside this, I'm going to do the same thing. Images. And this way, whenever I add images to it, it has a place to save them. Okay, let's go into terminal now. And we want to access this folder here. So I'm going to write CD for change directory. And I'm going to write desktop. And here we go. And I'll, I'll see that I'm in the desktop. It says desktop right there. I'm going to type clear. And then I'm going to do CD bootstrap. And then I'm going to write clear again. So now terminal is inside of the bootstrap folder on my desktop. In order to get started though, I need to install all of the node packages. So I'm gonna do NPM install. What this is going to do is it's going to attach node to my project and it's also going to run through that packages.json file and it's going to install all of the dependencies that I have listed. So I'm going to press enter here and it's going to run through a whole install process and this may or may not take a couple of minutes. It's really just going to depend on my computer speed, your computer speed, everyone's computer speed. And here we go, everything is now installed. I'm going to type clear just to make room on here. And I'm going to write the next command and that is gulp watch. And now what it's doing is it's watching for any changes inside of this bootstrap folder. So if I open this up and I go into SAS, and actually, you know what, I can just open up I can open it up in terminal. So I'm going to drag bootstrap into, or I'm going to, I'm sorry, sublime text. So I'm going to drag bootstrap into sublime text. I'm going to go into CSS, scroll down here to variables and notice that nothing's color coded yet. We'll talk about installing a color code system in sublime for SAS in the next video. But for now I'm going to scroll down to blue and that's line 75. And uh, I'm going to scroll down a little bit more to theme colors primary, it says blue. I'm just gonna change that to green and press command S to save. You can open up the terminal right here. All right, so notice this notification popped up, it says styles task complete. And if I look right here, I'll see that it started watching the file. It detected a change. It went and it wrote this bootstrap dot CSS file and then it returned that notification and it told me that it finished compiling this in 5.66 seconds. So if, if I open up my bootstrap folder again and I go into dis and then CSS and then I scroll down to bootstrap.css, notice that the time right here, it says it was compiled today at 7.28 p.m. Well, it's 7.29 p.m. So that means it compiled it right now and we can compare that to some of these other CSS files in here which were last save back in August. So now I'm ready to make changes to any of these SAS files or image files and have it compile out for me. So that does it for this episode. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.